Welcome back to your daytime update. Our focus continues to be on the vaccine. Now, many people are wondering just how safe this vaccine actually is. We speak now to Dr. Demitayo Famaroti from the National Health Laboratory Services about the safety of the vaccines. Doc, thank you very much for your time this afternoon. Now, we know that as far as research into the, the, the COVID-19 vaccine that we've received, the one from um, Oxford Astra, um, AstraZeneca, is continuous. There are continuous new findings. What would you outline as perhaps some of the latest research that has come out concerning the, the, the COVID-19 vaccination? Um, I, I think uh, let's start uh, from looking at the presentations, not even looking at just the vaccines. The, the, the virus itself is new. Um, initially, you know, uh, the presentation, the signs and symptoms were like classical um, respiratory symptoms generated basically uh, from the cough, sore throat, uh, joint pain. But now uh, people are having um, unusual presentations which are not even related that much to uh, the respiratory um, system in the body. And another thing that has been discovered recently has been the issue of the new strains. We have the South African strains, we have the UK strain, we have the Brazil strain. So these are new strains which were different from the, uh, the strains that were uh, first detected during the first wave. And also we had issues with different medicines which have been researched upon to see which one will be effective in the uh, treatment of uh, COVID itself. Now, moving on to the vaccine, lots of vaccine candidates are still in the pipeline, but only a few, um, few, I mean, uh, are already been marketed. And um, so there, there's a lot of unanswered questions. Um, now we know the vaccines are available. We've been told about the efficacy based on studies, but there's still a lot of unknowns. Um, when I say unknowns, um, in terms of um, the efficacy is fine, but you know, in terms of the safety is good based on uh, the studies, but in terms of things like maybe we may have to have a yearly um, a vaccinations uh, program, we don't know yet. So with the vaccine, it's safe, we know that. It works, yes, we know that, but there are just some little you know, unanswered questions. Like I said, one of the important ones is, are we gonna be having a yearly vaccinations uh, program against vaccines, I mean, against COVID? We don't know yet. So that's what I can say about the research that's going on um, and uh, with, as per the COVID vaccine. There are a lot of unknowns in this uh, factor, but let's look at Covishield, uh, which is the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine. What are the possible side effects of this vaccine on, on the body? Vaccines, I would say categorically, are very safe. Very, very safe. One thing about vaccines is they have other components. So it's not just the, um, the vaccine itself, but it has components that comes with it before people get you know, vaccinated. So what happens sometimes in rare occasions is we have a very few people who sometimes have some reactions to those components but generally vaccines are safe. So I'll say the AstraZeneca vaccine is very safe. And, um, and, and even when this, when this happens, they are just mild, um, mild incidences, like maybe pain at the injection site, a little bit of rash there, but there are mild things that can actually be dealt with. So the vaccine is safe. So talk to us perhaps about some of the, 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 the misconceptions and the, the fake news and the level of apprehension uh, that has come about in society, or at least in some quarters regarding the vaccine. Uh, what do you believe is the source of that? Uh, the source is mainly, I'll say, mainly based on um, the anti-vaccination theory, um, so also conspiracy theories. Um, so sometimes it's based on maybe religious beliefs or personal opinions or beliefs, but it's not really based on sound science itself. Um, it's also based on misinformation or disinformation and sometimes just lack of information because what happens is people access information from unreliable sources. I've heard about 5G network issues. Uh, a friend was even telling me, oh, I don't really wanna get the vaccine because I could just turn into a zombie. 
You know, so people think of DNA changes, uh, and some even believe that it's a way whereby the government wants to track the population movements and things like that. So I think these are some of the problems. Uh, when people get uh, information from unreliable sources, this is bound to happen. So what I can advise is people need to go to reliable um, sites to get information, like um, the, the Department of Health uh, website, you know, the www.health gov.za and also the National Institute uh, for Communicable Diseases, that's NICD, www.nicd.ac.za. Other reliable sources would be your WHO, that's the World Health Organization. So I implore people to go in to check uh, on this website, which are reliable um, sources of um, science-based information, and they can get correct information, whereby they can have access to updated information about COVID. Now, we understand, obviously, that the, the, um, the, the, the vaccines have now arrived in South Africa. They arrived yesterday. They'll be going through at least 10 to 14 days of, of testing. Uh, talk to us about what goes into certifying the quality of the vaccines. Okay. Uh, with, vac uh, with, 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 um, with certifying vaccines, um, most of the vaccines are not made in South Africa. I mean, for now, at least. Um, so what happens is the regulatory authorities where the vaccines are made will have actually certified them as safe and effective. There are different phases even before a vaccine is actually rolled out for use by the general public. We have the preclinicals, then we have the phase one to phase three. Then phase four is when it's now um, meant to be, when it's satisfied and you know can be used by the general population. From phase one to phase three, there's a common thing there, which is safety. They always look at safety at each point. Phase three looks generally at efficacy. Does it really do, does it work? Does it prevent disease? So by the time it gets to stage four, um, and it's been marketed, especially in the country where it's, uh, it's made by their regulatory authorities, and when it's brought into South Africa, just like we just received the AstraZeneca Oxford vaccine, we have the National Control Laboratory here in South Africa. They just don't rubber stamp things because um, CDC says so, or let's say the FDA or the European medicine says it's, it's, you know, it's safe and it's, the efficacy is good. No, they don't rubber stamp. They still carry out safety tests. They carry out quality tests on these vaccines. And after, they also look at the data submitted by um, about the vaccine. And after looking at the data and the outcome of their own test, then they will now be able to advise the government here in South Africa to say, yes, it's fit for the people in the Republic of South Africa. That's the system that goes on within the Republic of South Africa in certifying a vaccine as being safe for use. And why is vaccination such a critical part of uh, controlling the spread of COVID-19? Um, the question is why not? Look at what we do now. We all wear face masks. We socially distance from other people. We're social animals, you know, that's what we do. We interact, but now we don't do that. Economies have been shut down, uh, different part of the economy, I mean, for almost a year now. Look at that. But with the vaccine, we may go back to some form of normalcy. The vaccine is gonna prevent, most likely present um, severe ENLCs and also deaths. So that's one of the reasons why we need to vaccinate. And also we've been hearing about the word herd immunity. It's also gonna boost and increase you know, the herd immunity within the country and also globally when we vaccinate. And also this is one of the best ways to actually stop this pandemic and go back to some form of normalcy and be able to open part of our economy. People have died. We can bring them back, but we need to open part of, I mean, we need to be able to open the economy. We need to stop more people from dying. We need to stop more people from getting very sick, being admitted in an ICU. And that is why we need to bring in the vaccine to stop the pandemic. Now, Dr. Fomoroti, you are from the National <laughs> Health Laboratory <laughs> Services. Put into context for us the role that you have played uh, throughout this COVID-19 period and the role that you continue to play. Um, I wouldn't say me, per se. Um, I think I'll, I just want to say thank you to every other person um, working with the NHLS, National Health Laboratory Services, 
Um, this is what we've all gone through, not just me. Um, I'm a medical doctor, so I've actually done part of the clinical um, uh, you know, networking, dealing with COVID patients and also the laboratory part of it, because we receive most of the specimens, we test the specimens, and we need to release this result in good time so that the clinicians in the hospital can actually um, deal with patients in, in, in within the shortest possible time. And it's actually been very difficult. It's been a difficult almost one year now. We've worked almost 24 hours and it's, it's not been easy. That's all I can say. Um, releasing results day, night, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's really been challenging, but um, the government has actually been very, very supportive. We were able to get most, um, a little bit more staff to, to deal with the, the surge in, in, the, in, in the COVID testing from the first wave to the second wave that we are in presently. So it's really been challenging. And I'll give kudos to the CEO of the NHLS for being supportive, giving us at least some of the things we need for to, to, to be able to, to respond to this pandemic. Now, now, Dr. Afamoroti, you as well as other frontline workers are first in line to receive uh, the, the doses of, of the vaccination. Uh, what is the general sentiment in the medical fraternity regarding this? Is there a level of um, excitement? Is it being well received or perhaps also a level of apprehension in some quarters? I'll say both. There are health workers who feel no to the vaccine and there are some who feel, yes, I'll take the vaccine. So I think it's about getting the information out. Vaccines are safe. Vaccines save lives. And um, I think that's the best way to deal with those who are hesitant to get in the vaccine. Um, so I, I, at this point, I'll say it's both. I've met people who are willing to get the vaccine, who are healthcare workers. And I've also met those who are hesitant in getting the vaccine. So I think now it's just a government um, looking at, you know, the message being passed out, you know, sharing information. Vaccines are very safe and it's coming from me as a medical doctor, a pathologist too. Vaccines are very safe. And I'll, I, I will be the first to take it in NHLS if I'm offered the, uh, given the opportunity just to show everybody how safe this COVID vaccine is really. It's quite an interesting phenomenon when you do find, irrespective of how big that number is or how small that number is, healthcare workers and healthcare practitioners who are hesitant to take the vaccine, what are the reasons that they give? Um, you know, one would expect because they are in the health fraternity that they would be the first to say, yes, we know the efficacy of uh, the vaccine and so there will be no hesitation. What reasons do they, do they give? Uh, there are numerous reasons. And one other thing you need to understand is there are different types of healthcare workers. You're in different sectors, different departments. So, um, the level of um, the depth of knowledge might also be different if you look at it that way. So that's why I suggested that, you know, it's more engaging those who are hesitant. There, there are few, but, you know, that few can actually convince those outside about uh, the safety, the efficacy. So we just need to get the information out, get them to see the data that vaccines are safe. I think that's the way I'll just go about um, dealing with the few healthcare workers who are hesitant uh, to get him vaccinated. Well, thank you very much for your insight there, Dr. Temitayo Famaroti. Certainly you're saying education, 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 getting the word out there and understanding the dynamics of exactly how vaccines work.